So this here talks about the subspecies and all the color varieties of turkey. Starting up here with the broad-breasted white, uh, Beltsville small white, the Mexican wild turkey, midget white, the chocolate, Narragansett, standard bronze, royal palms, slate, white holland, lavender, jersey buff, bourbon red, and the Spanish black. A little information about them and that's pretty neat. So this here is the uh, Gold's Wild Turkey. It talks about how uh, in out in Arizona and such, they're they're trying to reintroduce them, and basically there is in 2016 estimates around 1,700 uh, turkeys are back in the wild. 1,500 in Arizona and 200 in New Mexico. But these here are them. And they've got a little thing here. This is a cool little what the sound they make. Very uh, a lot of beetle green and orange in the plumage. So that's pretty neat. And here is their their range. So this here is a map of the various ranges of the different wild turkeys. This here being the blue, being eastern wild turkey. Down here is the Florida or the Osceola wild turkey. Red being the Rio Grande wild turkey. The green being a hybrid of the eastern and the Rio. These down here are the Gold's Wild Turkey. The purple are Merriam's Wild Turkey. And then the reds are the, are the Rio Grande's again. Let's see. There is a... Oh, the pink down here is the Oscillated Turkey. And... That's about it. So that I'm gonna step back a bit. So those are the statuses of the wild turkeys of 2014. Here are the Florida wild turkey or the Osceola, Osceola. and This here is Merriam's Wild Turkey. They definitely they like the ponderosa pines, the pinyon, and juniper trees. And so that's That's them. Let's see if we can get a better look. This here's the Eastern Wild Turkey. And what they did, it, what they do is they use these net guns, which they used in this display. And basically they have a cannon that's hidden and they'll call in the turkeys and once they got enough or once they're in a close proximity they will shoot this heavy net gun as you can see and catch them in large numbers and I'll show you in a bit they've got video footage of shooting the guns and catching turkeys this is a way for them to catch wild wild turkeys and then raise them <laughs> raise them to uh, 
hatch out babies to repopulate. So here is the Rio Grande wild turkey. They've got a bunch of little baby turkey poults here on the ground. And then a bobcat over there trying to hunt them. But this is the Rio Grande female. This here is the oscillated wild turkey, or a jungle turkey. They've got a bit smaller in stature, and a really nice turquoise blue face. They look a lot, look a lot lighter. So this here is just a history of hunting turkeys with different bullets starting from 1866 and the different models of guns that were used and the types of bullet shells and and here's a display down below the various boxes of shells. Oh, good morning. I was just thinking about last year's opening day of the spring gower season. On the way home, we stopped at the little store down at the crossroads for a quick bite to eat. Hunters were everywhere, eating sandwiches and drinking soda pop, buying extra shotgun shells, and lots of other hunting equipment. As my son and I sat there eating lunch, we thought about how much turkey hunting means to this little community. The National Wild Turkey Federation funded a study in Mississippi and found that turkey hunters in the state spent $14 million during the study year. You want to hear something even more impressive? The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service found that all hunters, not just turkey hunters, in 1996, across the nation, spent more than $20 billion. That's $20 billion. That's a tremendous amount of money for small rural communities like this. The next time you pull into one of those little stores out in the country and you wonder, how in the world can that owner make a living? You think about how many folks are going to be stopping in there during deer season, duck season, or spring turkey season. Don't forget to figure in the folks going fishing. Keep that in mind the next time someone spouts off that we ought to get rid of hunting. Be sure and enjoy the rest of your day now. Did you have to pay to play? Hmm? Did you have to pay? Yeah, that was <laughs> yeah, high score, so do your name. Do your name. Continue. <laughs> cool.
Hello, folks, and welcome to the Winchester Museum. Hey, look around. Did you know that you're currently standing in the world's largest box hall? That's big, all right. That's eight feet wide by 16 feet long. It's almost 48 times bigger than your old box hall. some of the most unusual oddities in the world of the wild turkey. You know, I've been hunting for more than 30 years, but frankly, I've seen very few of the birds here on display. Nature has its own way of twisting things into unique creations. And thanks to volunteers and friends of the NWTF, we've been able to get a collection of these on display here in the Winchester Museum for your viewing pleasure. It would take a lifetime in the outdoors to see all of the birds that are here, such as bearded hens, gobblers with triple spurs, multiple bearded birds, different color faces, albino turkeys, and more. Understanding nature is something that helps you appreciate nature. And that's one of our goals here at the National Wild Turkey Federation. Take all the time you want and enjoy looking at these unique specimens. So we have a double spur. This one had a broken leg. A smoke gray Osceola gobbler. Smoke gray hen up there in the trees. What's that one say? Uh, I smoke gray Osceola mm -hmm. on flight two. Another smoke gray gobbler. This is a melanistic black uh, eastern mob. More turkeys. Yeah, pied deer. Yeah, pied deer. Eastern albino turkey. This nutrition deficient bearded gobbler. Nutrition deficient. <laughs> oh, the beard's all kind of. Albino hen down there. A couple of albinos. What's that? A hen with gobbler plumage. Oh. A hen with gobbler plumage. 
Blah. Hen with gobbler. Blah. Plumage. Plumage. This turkey. This turkey Come here. Take a good look. Before you is a unique collection. That's five beards. Hello, I'm James Earl Kenimer with the National Wild Turkey Federation. While wild turkeys are abundant today, we almost lost this great game bird. Thanks to the efforts of wildlife agencies and the Federation's volunteers and partners, we've been able to restore the wild turkey by trapping wild birds and releasing them in a suitable habitat. Through these efforts, on a spring morning, you can hear the gobble of the wild turkey echoing across this great land. Wild turkeys have been a part of America long before this country was founded. This great game bird fueled a growing nation as the pioneers swept westward. They helped feed America. Can you imagine Thanksgiving without a turkey? As this nation grew, we almost lost the wild turkey. Nearly 70 years ago, sportsmen began to fund the comeback of the wild turkey and many more species of wildlife. Since then, hunters have contributed billions of dollars to the conservation. They did it through license fees, self-imposed excise taxes, and later through the volunteer support of conservation organizations like the National Wild Turkey Federation. Together, we brought back the wild turkey from the brink of extinction to nearly seven million birds throughout North America. Thanks to our hunters and wildlife agencies, we all benefit from healthy populations of wildlife like white-tailed deer, bald eagles, and wild turkeys. The wild turkey is a symbol of the success we've had in this country restoring our wildlife populations. America wouldn't be the same without our hunting heritage and the wild turkey.